thank everyone for being here tonight, and I guess we'll start off. Uh, initially, we were not having a meeting, but Councilor Barron had some issues he wanted to go over that will be on tomorrow night's agenda. And what we need to do is probably go over those first, and then if we have time, we'll go back up with some of the first items just to make sure we have any questions that are answered before tomorrow night. And Councilor Bearden, if you'd like to start off. And yeah, I've got uh, three items on the agenda. One is longevity pay for the employees. Now, there was uh, budgeted uh, $25,780 for that longevity pay. And I'm told by uh, Mr. Stewart that the uh, total cost would be 41900 now, this is something that we have given to the employees for as long as I can remember, and I've got some copies for each of you from past agendas. And if you'll look on, this is last year's on the front, front here is last year's. If you'll look at item number three on the second page there, you'll see we uh, approved forty-one thousand six hundred dollars for longevity pay last year for the employees. It just be three hundred dollars more than that. Uh, the, the, there has been an increase. It, uh, the last, the last uh, one that I could find that I had a copy of that broke it down was in two thousand fourteen, and that's further back in the uh, paperwork you have, and it. Uh, addresses each individual employee how much they would have gotten. But uh, James said there's been an increase in the longevity pay last year. And it's on your agenda, 325 for six years to 10, 11 to 15 years is 425, 16 to 20 is 525, and 21 and over is 625. Anyone under five years would not get any longevity pay. Now, uh, this, as I said, this is something that the employees have gotten for as long as I've been on the council, and even prior to that, I know they've been giving them to the employees, and uh, they come to expect it every year, and I'm sure most of them use it like a Christmas bonus. Uh, I don't know how many of you get a bonus at Christmas time every year. I do, uh, and uh, this is if this is something that we've been giving them for years, and if you take it away from them, then you're reducing their pay instead of uh, equalizing or increasing. This is, would be a reduction in pay for all the employees that have been here six years or longer. Okay, now basically, what are we talking about in total now? $41,900. And what's budgeted? $25,780 is already in the budget for it. And what's our proposed difference? Where is that coming from? It would be, be $16,120. That would be something we would have to add to the budget. It's not budgeted. It's a non-budgeted item. What's in the now? $16,220. That's the difference. That's the difference. Oh, I got that. What yeah. are we budget? $25,780 in the budget for it. And the total cost is going to be $41,900 this year. Why the, um, why the uh, $16,000 for the employees? Was there a particular reason that drove that number for 25? I asked James that same question. Okay. I had that number in there, and I think they just picked up a wrong or not a good number. I okay. Don't know, I don't know if it was something you saw from, from previous year or not. Um, I, I'm certainly supportive of the employees. I think I think um, most employees here would say that they welcome my interaction with them. So I'm, anything I say would not be necessarily advocated for or against this. I do have some concerns about the policy. Uh, if not, I don't have concerns about giving employees raises when they do a good job and, and they merit that. Uh, you all just need to be aware so that you have full information um, that the employees 
are eligible for merit increases, and those merit increases are 5% per year, which is what I would consider above average in the industry mm -hmm. um, as far as manual and on the outfit. There's plenty of businesses that don't get 5% you know, increases every year. Uh, that's up to the staff, um, up to 10 years, I think it is, or, or, or more. Um, so, so I, I you know, they, they do have that option. I was told, I asked when this came up, I asked um, what this was and why this was implemented some years back. And I was told that it was implemented when the city was not in a position to give raises, that they implemented this system as, as some recognition of their employees, but they couldn't give the 5% or the, or the full amount of the raise that they had been accustomed to giving. Since then, that obviously has changed because we're now doing those merit increases every year. Um, so I think that's one change. The, the problem fundamentally that I have with this as it is designed, and I shared this with Councilman Beard, and I, I'm not sure what his response was to it, or if any, is that you have employees who qualify for this, as it is described here, who have been suspended once or more during the year. And I do philosophically have a problem with rewarding someone with pay, an employee with pay who is not, has not been in good standing for the year. Um, so that, uh, I also shared my uh, concern with Councilor Bitterman when he did that, you know, with, with him having a daughter that works here, that uh, there's some concern. I, I'm not saying there's a legal concern. I'm just saying I personally and others have heard express that perception that maybe um, not the wisest to be promoting that when, when you have family members that are eligible. And we've had that in the past with other council members who've had wives or sons or daughters or whatever that have worked here. So um, those are those are my my comments on it. Uh, I'm certainly pro-employee and would advocate for those who do a good job to, to be rewarded as appropriate by the city. But philosophically, I, I, I have a problem with rewarding someone that, that has been suspended for not doing their job. And when I discussed this with the <coughs> mayor, I, I suggested if he didn't feel comfortable giving it to uh, employees that have been suspended or, or reprimanded for some reason, we could write that in the resolution to exclude those if if that's what the council decided to right. do. Um, do you have a dollar amount attached to if we were to look at performance based? I mean, it could be whatever you make it to be. I mean, the, the terms of the number of folks who would have been disciplined over the course of the year is not going to make a significant dollar amount. It's not really about the dollars, it's about the principle of, of that. I mean, probably got five or six that were spending last year since if you look at the fiscal year and then you've got another couple that have been suspended since September 30th. So you probably got a total center pass in there so um, that that have had suspensions. Um, Do you think that's five, six grand, something like that? I, I would guess that it's what probably, you mean total from probably four and maybe Maybe about four thousand if you enter a performance yeah, based objective. Not a significant dollar amount in okay. the big picture. Okay. But, um, sure. And then you would just have to decide what the criteria are. Does everybody get it just based off purely off of warm body being here for a certain period of time? Is it is it tied to do you have you know suspensions? Is it suspensions and reprimands, written warnings, what you know that's that's your discretion. Whatever you, you all come up with is, is what would be implemented. But uh, I'm just sharing with you my thoughts on where I am on that. And I would, I would agree. I would be concerned <laughs> with rewarding employees who weren't performing at the same bar as those who were doing their job at an, you know, an exemplary level um, from a philosophy. You know, from a principle-based standpoint, um, I understand that we might not be able to get a, a hard number as far as how that might reduce the price tag we're talking about, but everywhere I've ever worked, I've always had to at least meet a bar or do my job to a certain standard in order to qualify for anything. Um, so that would be my only 
I would be in favor of some sort of performance metric. Who would be appropriate to uh, come up with that terminology or wording for us to consider by tomorrow evening? That that was my next that was my next statement. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's everyone in the working world. That's strictly a an HR based mm -hmm. question and answer. I don't think any of us are in that profession as far as the counselors because we're going to make the decision. I think we need to get some kind of advice. Uh, from a legal perspective, just making sure that we have the right verbiage in whatever decision uh, we make as far as policy and procedure. You know, that's, that's out of our, our scope. But I do know this is, this is an HR-based oh, issue that we're talking about. Now remind me, I know we just talked about an HR contract recently. What were the, um, I think, were we going to defer to the city attorney for that type they of they HR stuff? On, on those matters. Okay. They, what? they advise us on HR matters. The attorney. Okay. Do you have, so you're going to get HR? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you have anything like handy, Leslie, that you could easily reference? No, but just in listening to what y'all are saying, it seems to me that you could include just a provision you already have that um, if an employee that is otherwise eligible is dismissed for cause at any time prior to payment, that employee is not entitled to longevity. I don't know why you couldn't say any employee who has been in the list off the several different types of discipline that the city has suspended, you know, suspended without pay, demoted, terminated, you know, the several options that you have. I don't know why you couldn't just put in another provision that says, provided, however, an employee who is otherwise eligible to serve longevity pay who is dismissed prior to payment or who has been subjected to discipline, including Suspension without pay, demotion, I guess those would be the, the main two, since September 30, 2016, shall not be eligible. I don't know why that would work. I can look at that. Okay. Are we allowed to ask questions? At a point, we're in our discussion at this time. Thank you. I think that's the key is you all got to decide what your what your um, criteria are, and and then we can we can define it in the, in the policy there. So generally, being suspended without pay in my world that means you've done something pretty serious. We would yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Okay. And then if you've been demoted, same thing. Same thing. So suspended without pay or demotion, I think, is a, a perfectly fine. You, you can also be on this. Yeah. You can also be on discipline, first level, first, second, third level third. notice. Right. I mean, there's all forms of discipline. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's just how 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 low or high of a bar do you want to set? Do we exercise any type of progressive discipline, like a phase one, you do this, you're on a phase one, you do the same thing again, it's a phase two, you do the same thing again, you're out? It's, it's not really uh, addressed that way because we're subject to the personnel board rules that okay. have to go through their process, but through their process and also just through due process, anyone who receives discipline that involves a decrease in pay or a suspension of their pay for a period of time always receives a hearing with either their supervisor or the mayor or somebody prior to that happening. Depending on the severity of it, they may or may not have an appeal right to the personnel board. But that's why I kind of come back to suspension without pay. That at least is a certain level that the person should have received a hearing before being given either their supervisor or the mayor prior to that happening, and then again, depending on the length of it, to drive whether they had an appeal right to the personnel board. But that's at least a, a line that you can draw that somebody either has or has not had that. I wouldn't want to get into, uh, it, okay. yeah, or, or you know, a good enough evaluation, you know, what is good enough. If somebody didn't get perfect, is that good enough? 
I mean, just or not. I, I would rather it be a bright line, and that's at least a bright line that we can draw. So suspended without pay and demotion, that feels yeah, like that I'll would cover it? I'll look and see it. if there's anything else that I'm missing. Those are the only things that I can think those of are, short those of termination. Are, those okay. are well defined. I mean, when you get into what, what Councilor uh, Wilson was saying, it becomes more subjective to give someone just a verbal warning, even sometimes if you just give a, a verbal conference and then a write-up and put it in the file. Mm -hmm. But if you've been suspended or demoted, it's serious. I mean, not that the others aren't serious, but I mean, it, it is, in my mind, serious business. If I got suspended, you know, sent home without pay for five days, that's going mean, to get my attention. Mm -hmm. it's pretty serious. Issue. Do we pretty much think we're in agreement that we could come to a compromise at least on the criteria if we could work that out between now and tomorrow night? Yeah, yeah. I'm good with what we And discussed. I would think it would behoove us the long term bonus, the word itself, is tied to performance of the organization. And for the next go round, we need to look at how the city is sitting at the time we want to grant these bonuses. I've never been in an organization where you just grant a bonus because somebody's been employed for a period of time if the option is they're not doing well that year. So we need to consider that for the next go around at least. But uh, Councilor, uh, on, on yours, would you be kind enough to also look at it from the Finance Committee perspective and see what the alternative source of funding would be for the difference? Sure. I think that if we're going to look at it at the uh, time we do our, our budget, if we see that we're not going to have sufficient funds to, to do this the next year, then we need to give the employees a heads up that we're not financially able instead of just come up on Christmas and, and then say, hey, we're not going to give you the longevity pay like we've done last year and the year before and so forth. But again, that's something to consider for the next go round. Yeah, I'm not right. talking about for tomorrow night's discussion. And I, you know, and, and I felt there was no warning to anyone uh, that, that this might or might not happen when uh, it, it's happened in the past for a number of years. The reason I put it on here. Well, I'll be the first to say you don't have to be passed. I was yeah. trying to get Councilor London because he hasn't made any comments. Right. figure may go down a few thousand if we adjust for these other factors, but it would still probably be in the $12,000 yeah. range. And your budget is currently in the deficit. Mm -hmm. And considering this will be, what, the fourth time, third, fourth time we've gone through the well in this at first least, quarter? At least third. At some point, you have to deal with real... real we're, 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 we're emptying out the well fast, so mm -hmm. you know, down the road we may have an issue. But again, does everybody feel comfortable proceeding in that direction? Yes. Yeah. I, I feel comfortable in proceeding, just making sure we, we implement the right verbiage or implement the right decision when it comes to, you know, how we're going to, you know. Potentially exclude. Yeah, those, those employees that are not meeting performance. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing I'm questioning. That's all. Councilman? Yeah, I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. As far as performance, uh, employees who doesn't meet performance, right. or right. as we call it, doesn't meet expectations. Right. Yeah, you know, just making sure that we have the right verbiage in there and um, we word it correctly, so it won't come back to bite us. That's all. Right now, we've been looking at the verbiage suspended without pay or demotion as criteria to a not meets expectations. Right. And I guess we're going to have some, some written document to get to that suspension. Yeah, they're suspended as being right. Right. Yeah. Being right on the transfer. 
So that's what we talked about thus far, as far as criteria goes. Leslie feels good about suspension without pay and uh, end of motion because that would mean it was a serious enough infraction. Is everybody satisfied on that for discussion purposes tonight? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councilor Beard, you had two other All items. Right. And these next two go hand in hand. Um, item number six is resolution 2017 R141 to rescind resolution 2017 R135 that was passed for last uh, council meeting. It proved uh, taking field number four at Ruffner Park and turn it into a baseball uh, field and turn it into a, a dog park. Uh, item number seven is resolution 2017 R142 that allows uh, the area top the Beacon Park behind the upper pavilion uh, to be a permanent dog park. We could use field number four since they've already started Preparing it for the dog park uh, as a temporary until uh, at such time that uh, the, the dog park is prepared and ready to to be to be used at Beacon Park. And I went up there and it's it's uh, about 150 feet deep and about 130 feet wide and there's a level flat uh, area. There's uh, all we got to do is fence it in. There's plenty of room for a uh, large and small dog park. It's got pavilion up there for people to sit in the shade in the summertime. It's got uh, uh, park benches, I say park benches, got picnic benches up there for you to sit at. It's got a restroom, it's got water, it's got everything that uh, would be needed for the dogs and it's, uh, it's, it's not being used at this time. It's a, it would be a perfect location in my opinion. Just a quick comment based on your thought process, mm -hmm. Councilor Bearden, uh, why do we even have a res uh, the resolution to rescind the use of field number four? You mentioned using it as temporary, and that's what we voted to do. We're already in process of getting that prepared, so why is that even on the agenda? Yeah, it was my understanding that that was going to be the permanent location. No, sir, that you said here and you voted for it. Okay. It was definitely put in as a temporary, temporary. Right. situation. Right. Now. Are we far enough along to consider the permanent location? That's, that's what I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I'll defer to our parks. Uh, we got you know, as, as several person, members here. <laughs> as of talking to the baseball and the dog, dog I said a dog people. I, I, I want to call you dog people. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't look at comments from the audience. Don't bark, especially if you don't mind. Please. Thank you. I don't want to call you dog Discussion well, to let, we'll get general audience discussion when we get through up yeah, here, yeah, so yeah, let's get out. Discussion for everybody, right? You know, we, we all concluded that Rutherford was temporary, right? Okay. And I talked to them about Beacon being a good place, and they all agreed that Beacon would be a great place mm -hmm. to put a dog park. So, because what it does, it keeps tra foot traffic to Grantsville Station, you know, and then for the safety concern. Now, if I had a wife, a single lady or whatever, I don't want her to be at Ruffin by herself walking a dog. Mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable for the city's concern that there be a, a high traffic location, which is at Beacon. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. But is that something we need to get more definitive planning on and come back at another point in time and present that proposal to do that and what it's going to involve? Because you have more than just a flat level. You know, you have right. property that's out in the wood that maybe you can use some of that. So I think we need to look at that as a plan to make it a permanent place okay. uh, for, the, for the dog. And I think they all agree that would be a great place. That's full of discussion. So that's still a discussion. And that would free up, that would free up the ballpark for the kids to use in the spring. Right. Kids don't use it. Well, actually, actually, I thought they, they, they actually they use it. I'm mean, I mean, I mean, just talking to both sides. It, it gets used. It gets used. They don't well, use the T-ball. The T-ball field is what they get used. But the field that we're on, they, they, they use the field. But, look, we're here, we're here for the, everybody. Not just dogs, not baseball. We're here for everybody. And so we're trying to find the best place to, to hope that everybody can be right. satisfied. And so after talking to everybody, 
not just one side. I talked to both right. sides. And I think we're all concluded that, yes, they want their field back. Sure. But I think they just want a kind of a timeline. When can they get it back uh, from us? And in the meantime, we work on the beacon to make that a permanent location. So do we need to have either resolution tomorrow night or are these uh, the first one needs to come off period because okay. we know that's temporary. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll remove that one then okay. tomorrow night. And the second one, is that something we need to actually vote on a resolution for or do we need to wait till we've got more definitive information? Can somebody that? please move that we could have a chance to speak? I said, well, well you can once we're through. If three. someone could please move that we could have a chance to speak. This is not a business meeting. Time. This is just a discussion meeting. Discuss. We don't vote tonight. We make no decisions tonight as far as final conclusions. This is a work session, and that's all it is. Go ahead, Councilor Wilson. Do you have a comment? Yeah. Um, the only thing I, you mentioned earlier that moving the dog park down at Ruffner was temporary. Um, I think long term, um, we keep going back and forth, and we're forgetting the process. Yeah, I'm talking about process. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it for four years now. Next but I think, I think we need to go back to the parks committee and really think about this thing because if we're talking about using Ruffner as a temporary location, then moving it to Beacon, and all due respect, we have to look at Beacon. How are we using Beacon now? We're using Beacon Park as a revenue stream right now. I don't know if in particular that would be a good place. I'm not saying that. You know, it, 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 it would be, but we have to think about it. We have people in the community, and I wish I had more people here from Holiday Gardens Neighborhood Association, but we have people in the community that use it <coughs> in the pavilion. I don't know if that would be a good location to have a dog park next to the grill, next to people having parties up there, next to, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I think that's that's a discussion that we need to have because if we move the dog park there, will we continue to have that revenue stream that's being generated by Beacon Park? So, I mean, think about it. Do, do you want a barbecue where dogs are playing around, jumping around, or whatever? I don't have, let me make this statement now. Please don't have Peter coming to me or any other animal person. You know, I don't have, pro I don't have a problem with a dog park. Let me make that disclaimer right now. But is that a good location for a dog park? And I would like to go back to the process, Council London, and like some other municipalities do, go back through the process. Let's take it to the Parks Committee. Let's have a, uh, you know, a town hall meeting or whatever the case may be. And let's talk about this thing. Let's talk about the long range plan while we got a temporary location right now. I think that's, but, key, if I could chime yeah, in, ahead. I, 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 I hear you what you're saying, and I yeah. agree with most of that. I think that's the key, and that's what we talked about at the last meeting was, even at Ruffner, is looking at an overall master plan for that. You know, when we were talking about soccer, and we were talking about dogs, and we were talking about baseball, that whole thing needs to be redone. And so I don't think we can sit here tonight and say what the future is, until we take a comprehensive look at it, like you said, and I've heard those same comments that you, you have said about. And then again, the real discussion tonight is whether or not this item stays on the agenda for tomorrow night, or is it something that needs more overview before it comes back to us for a decision and a general discussion. The general discussions need to occur in public type venues uh, and at the meeting that we actually have something to present. I still say it's a, it's a council decision. Whatever the majority, right. I'm, I'm Go ahead, council. All right. Um, I ran a couple of stats yesterday. All okay. right. So I was looking at both properties on Google Earth and doing some measurements. All right. I'm not saying these are exact. These are just based off the imagery and the and the and the and the data I was able to gather. So approximately field four, 19,890 square foot, approximately. Beacon. Now, I know there's some room in the woods to expand, possibly. I don't know what that looks like, all right? But we know there's going to be some clearing and stuff that might have to happen. From what I could see around the old tennis courts, it was around 12,500 square feet. So it was a very large difference. I looked up on the internet, AKC recommends at least a half an acre 
for a dog park. An acre is 43 odd thousand square feet. So even the even field four is a little short of it, but is a lot larger of a space than the Beacon Park. When we were originally talking, we even flirted with the idea that maybe there's an opportunity for two dog parks, okay? We talked about the fact that this is a temporary solution and that we want to take a holistic look at Ruffner. I'm in favor of that ballpark field four being a dog park until we get a holistic vision for Ruffner ballpark. Do we proceed with Beacon? Absolutely, sure, I'd love to take a look at it, but is Beacon the answer to field four? I don't believe so. I think Beacon might have an opportunity to be a standalone answer, but I think um, field four is a good option for a temporary dog park until we take a holistic look at Ruffner. That is my thoughts. And to piggyback on Bobby Joe, you know, um, there's not a whole lot of shaded area at Beacon right now aside from the pavilion. But to, to go with what you're saying, if that is rented, then that eliminates some of the ability for people to kind of hang out at the pavilion while their dogs are at the park. And then to go, do I want to rent that pavilion if I know I've got a dog park five feet away from it? So. Council, I have just a quick question. What do you think would be a reasonable amount of time for the long-term solution for your committee to get together, get with the public, and have some type of recommendation that we would really consider? We can meet. We can meet in a week. Doing that, and we can meet next Monday. Monday night. But how, how is that going to tie in with all the long-range plans and everything? So we can we can meet and come up with a long-range plan. But what's, what we're going to have to do? We're going to do an evaluation of every part that we right. have to find out exactly what's the best. And you want to talk about a permanent place? I, I just think I think Beacon's a good place, and I, I don't really think uh, it will have an effect on bringing that that provision. Because it will be separate. It will be, it'll be separate from the well, can we can, can we agree for tonight's discussion that basically this is not something that needs to be on the agenda tomorrow night for a vote that we need to bring something back I, in the I near will, future? I will table it till the next council meeting, but I will not remove it. And if you do that, you're intentionally silencing the people. You are intentionally disallowing people to speak. Sir. Appreciate your comments, and again, you'll have your chance to talk, but remember, we're doing this as a temporary solution. The counselor that's in charge of parks and recreation has been asked to get with the public, and you won't be silenced. This, again, is a work session to decide what we're going to vote on tomorrow night. We have organized everyone to come tomorrow, and you are intentionally silencing us. Tabling does not remove it from the agenda. It's still an agenda item. That it's still on the agenda. There's still an opportunity to talk about agenda items at the meeting. Tomorrow night, it will have to come up to the next right. regular council meeting. It will not go well, away. Let me just uh, let me chime in on that. There's no way in two weeks you're going to have a long range master plan or anything. Not as far as the So, 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 so if you think you're going to do it in two weeks, you're, you're just fooling yourself and everybody else here. So we can start the discussion in two weeks. Can I make a comment? Go ahead, please. I don't, I don't think everyone knows um, Council London. And Council, I said this while you were out. Council London has been working on a long range plan. And I noticed that some comments were made that they weren't aware of what was going on. But the Parks Committee, Council London, and um, this has been several years ago, Council Beard, I don't know if you were aware of this, has been working on a long range plan for our parks. Even a master plan for all of our parks that was about to uh, be introduced, what, uh, beginning of this term or something, I don't know what it is, Miss McAnally, or whatever her name is, I think she had an overall city plan, you know, Mayor, I think you mentioned that. But you have been working on a master plan for our parks for I know three years, I know three at least, that needs to be introduced, need to be brought to the council and, you know, let everyone know what's going on. Because it's out there. Where is it? I, I get your help. Okay. I mean, Terry's I mean, seen it. Bobby's seen it. Yeah. A lot of folks in the neighborhood have seen, have seen oh, what, what, Beacon, what Beacon could look like. What Beacon and Ruffner. What Beacon, Beacon, Beacon and Ruffner. Yes. I said Beacon. Ruffner and Heather. What, what it could look like. 
Can you have that for all the counselors? And I can get it. I get it. Okay. Can I call my guy and get his email to you? Okay. Okay. But Bobby, I mean, yeah. Councilor Wilson, just the one thing because we mm -hmm. we hung up on that before. What McAnally was doing was making a proposal, not a plan. They were proposing that they go and develop a plan. They haven't. They have not developed a plan yet. Okay. But no, they were one thing. We got a proposal. I still got to copy this about that thing. But it was. It was. What she was going to do. What she was going to do. She was going to take a look at every piece of park, River, Beacon, Green Space, Bruckner, Ellard, every piece of property we have in Iron Hill, and let us know she's professional. You know, that kind of like railroad park. She did that kind of work. And let us know what would best suitable with our property instead of us trying to figure out ourselves us non-professional in that field to try to figure out where different things should go she was going to do that plan for us so bring it back to the council now when you have a plan and know exactly what you can put at Bruckner what you can put at Ellis what you can put at Be uh, Beacon now it allows us to go and move forward with grants and whatever to figure out what we need to do and that was that was, that was what she was going to do for us as a professional as she is. And that's what she does. You know, that's how uh, uh, Railroad Park and those kind of things got here because that's what she did. She came up with a plan, went back to the council, and then we, we move forward. And what, and what that does allow us to say, all right, we can do this right now. We can do this part now. We can do this part five years from now. We can do this part ten years from now. But I think right now where we are, where we are right now, it's stand, a standstill. I think I'm part of that, out where the dog walks go, which basically. from what I remember sitting out in the audience during that discussion, I think y'all kind of put it to the side because of the extreme cost at the time, if I remember well, correctly. It wasn't, it wasn't going, it wasn't yeah. going to go through. Yeah, we used to I, I can't remember what, I just remember that. Yeah, it, was, it was negotiable. It was I think it was 50,000 or something yeah. like that, but it was negotiable. We could have negotiated. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was negotiable. Yeah. So what you may want to look at, which I think we had some discussion last meeting on this, we didn't call any names, but um, maybe you take one part, Ruffner, and say, okay, what can we make that? I mean, rather than fighting off the whole $50,000 chunk for a plan, maybe you get a plan for 5000 or 10000 for one part or whatever it is, okay. yeah. and, and develop one at a time rather, I mean, we don't have the funds to, to hardly do one, so if we get a grandiose master plan for, for everything, and we spend $50,000 on the plan and have nothing to start implementing the plan, so maybe we we know where our properties are, we know where they are, and, and we start picking them off and saying, okay, well, here's where we're gonna start. I mean, you've done some work in the past, the city's done work in Beacon, and, and upgraded it, so then maybe you choose your next one, if that's Rumpner, then you choose it, and come up with the design and the plan and see what you can get on there. Maybe you can get a soccer field, baseball fields, and a dog park on there. By the time, you know, if you reconfigure it. Who knows until you draw it out. Yeah, Council London knows that too. Mm -hmm. So I'll okay. put you on the spot. <laughs> All right, thank you. So we'll leave it on the agenda for tomorrow night and then we'll see, okay? Okay, now that gets the three things, Terry, and we agree that number six would come off, correct? For tomorrow night? Yeah, I'll take the hour move six and the table seven okay. until the next council meeting. Real quickly before we uh, open up for any comments, uh, we have at this point five people that have volunteered for industrial development. As a council, we have to decide this is for a one time project related to motion industries to. Uh, return property to their title, which is paid for, uh, which was done through an industrial board setup in order to get it financed, et cetera, when it was done. Uh, we need two more people at this point. Now the question is, do we want to get a full, uh, even more than that, we're having trouble getting our base seven. This is for a one-time project. And these would be for staggered terms, two, four, and six. Right now we have, uh, <coughs> Claude Perry, Jimmy Snyder, Susan Meadows, Matthew Lepore, and Jesse Rayford. And Jesse's been on the committee before. We're still short two members. And again, it would be for this one thing, it doesn't have a long-term life of any nature, although they do have long terms. And then we have to decide, uh, are we wanting to go through a review process or how do we want to do it? But we've already delayed for almost two months now, I believe. 
getting the board set up and it's we need to bring this to conclusion for motion industries so be considering that because it would be great if we could do some type of vote at the first or second meeting in january tops but if you know anybody else uh, we got some of these members by asking the other night at this planning zoning meeting and i've uh, got some volunteers off the committee itself so we need at least two more to make up a seven person slate if we could agree to vote on it that way I have okay so if just get those names into myself or the mayor and uh, we can get back together on that what um, if i get them into the council I'll let the council vote also okay well, well we'll pass them all out once they come in i'm just trying to collect them now to see if we get enough to even get our base I just want to make sure everybody. Yeah, for everybody will see them before we vote. Okay, not a problem. And we do have uh, tomorrow night the contract for the medical software for the fire department. That is a budgeted item. I think we said it would come out of. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a line item, correct? If we understood it correctly. It's actually already been paid, by my oh. understanding. Has it? it? It's my understanding that the, mm, the city is already paid amount that it's being required to pay but the company has changed names there's been a merger or something so what okay. this contract does so is really just switch us over to the new company we have to go through their contract to be able to work with them okay. but even though the contract itself does have renewal provisions and provisions that certain amounts will be due if it's not terminated prior to september 30th I've worked closely with Brad Doss, and he's going to ensure that a termination by us is sent probably in January, say, effective September 30, to ensure that there won't be any payment due under this. And that way, the city will be able to negotiate a new contract, say, in the summer, after they see whether they like this software or not. Mm -hmm. They'll continue on with us to do something different. Okay. Any questions on that for tomorrow night? All right. Thank you. And then we had one that strictly uh, has to do with the easement for a sign that will be at the Mercedes property. And I believe that's just more housekeeping than anything else that's allowing us access. Any comments, Mayor? Or any yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's where they put their sign in the median there. They have to have an easement from us to okay. do that. And then we have to have, make sure that we have access. So if there's any utility work or anything else that needs to be now, are there any comments you would like to make on the one about the River Tree contract and what that actually involves? So we can... That's just an auditing service that you all have used before. Uh, I think you have been doing it. Right. Um, for making, uh, supposed to be checking and making sure taxes are being paid, business taxes are being paid to the right municipality. If it's Iron it doesn't come to us, if it's Birmingham, or, or if someone's sending it to Birmingham, it should be coming to Iron Dale's. Audit service to help us track some of that. Any real questions on that? It's a continuation of the service we've done in, we've done in the past. I think uh, we found when we vote other municipalities and vice versa, so it goes both ways. But it's definitely something you need in place to make sure things are in the right vernacular. Um, so no additional questions on that. Um, probably will not. Uh, if you have some additional names by tomorrow night. If you can just pass them on, we'll put that on the first agenda in January if we can. And uh, any other questions on items for tomorrow night while we've got? Go ahead. The 269811, I'm trying to remember, was that a budgeted item for the sidewalks? Okay. Sorry. Uh, I think you're playing on that. I was, I think, I'm not positive, uh, James would have to answer this, was to take that out of the gas. Tax. I, I wasn't sure if he had that, made it. That's an old, that's, that goes back prior to this administration. Right. And that's the sidewalks that are going from Ruffner to uh, Montevallo and, and on us. The bid actually, the bid actually came in lower than what I, I think original anticipation or estimation was 300 and some thousand. It came in at whatever that number is, two something. Right. Uh, it's still, it's still a shared cost, 80, 20, I think but it's lower than the number that was projected before. So I think it's came in. So it is able to come under that particular tax? I need to, I'll confirm that for okay. you tomorrow night. Okay. Now, yeah, is, it's, this, it's, is, it's, is this to uh, 
to actually do the project because I know I know this come up has come up before, and we've had to get uh, uh, what do you call it? Have to, our city engineers to uh, well three times they they've had to re redraw this thing for that grant and. I think this is actually. This is actually going to get done do this something. time. Yeah, I think this is actually do something. This yeah, okay. Time. <laughs> it's, about it. uh, it's my understanding. I'll try to confirm those numbers for you. It started in 2008. Yeah, it's 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 been a long track because I can remember discussion from the other side, but uh, this should bring it to conclusion. And again, it is covered. So it's, it's not a non-covered item. Any other questions for tomorrow night, based on what the agenda is as of this point? Now, if anybody's here that would like to make comments on anything we discussed tonight, again, this is a work session. We don't vote on anything. Tomorrow night is the voting night when we hold regular council. Please. Um, I'd like to just say that, first of all, I have dogs, and I love my dogs. And I want y'all to have a dog park. But the gentleman said that the um, field does not get used. Well... We are in the process of revitalizing our baseball program. Uh, we're having um, a registration in January and February, and we're doing a um, blitz to get out all the work to the words to all of the kids and their parents so that they can come and play ball. Irondale used to be a mega ball field, a mega team. We sent someone to, to state to uh, the World Series on an annual basis. And I've only been here seven years, but I know Irondale football and Irondale baseball because of my children and grandchildren playing against them. And I just think that it's, first of all, I want to know how, how long is temporary? I mean, you know, temporary could be two months, it could be two years, it could be six years. We cannot do without Field 4 for even a year because we're going to start playing ball in, uh, what, April, March, and um, we're going to have to have it. So I, as, as someone that is looking forward to the baseball, would like to know how long temporary is. I mean, you know, Temporary could be anything in, in different people's minds. And if they get used to going to Ruffner Park, are they going to do, are y'all going to do anything to get the temporary out of it? So um, that's that's what I'd like to know is what temporary is. Thank how long you. how long is temporary? Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Um, so on December fourth. It was announced that field four would be taken. I'm making you guys some cheap. Um, that field four would be taken for the dog park and voted up December 5th. The president of the ballpark and none of the baseball community was notified. The old president was notified, who was not in a position to speak to which field would be used and which one would be appropriate for temporary use. We, the people that actually use the field, are asking for field number two not field number four to be used. Field number four is one of our most used fields. And it's in the middle, which is actually the worst location you could pick. Um, we don't like the idea of sharing because we are trying to expand our program, like she said. We've had meetings, we're trying to rally support and get our kids excited about meeting other children and their parents. Um, but it's kind of really hard to do that if we don't have a place to so we are asking to switch to bill number two if it is temporary and also to define how long temporary is, who's going to pay to put it back into a baseball field. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have one more in the back of the room. Yes, sir. Um, I'll be brief. Um, concerning the, the field, my son has played at that field ever since he played T-ball. We use come eight. up front. Yeah. We'll sit around. <coughs> yep, man. Yep, man. Come on here. Just hand it to him. Yeah. You can put it in. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look, my name is um, Terrence Cook. I live in Holiday Gardens. And we have been, my son has played at Rutherford Park from T Ball all the way up. We even went to the World Series um, in Georgia um, all the way up. We used each and every part of those, those fields because I can remember I coach. But my son has graduated, graduated this year from Shady Valley. And the thing is about the field is that when I was coaching there, I saw very little support from the council um, concerning. Um, we were the ones that bought the food and everything from the concession stand. And I remember one time they were talking about getting money from the concession stand to give to, I don't know, I guess the council or however they was trying to do. But I have, like I said, I have no problem with the dog park. I have a dog. I think a lot of people own dogs. Um, but the thing is, if you're going to consider, as like she said, if you're going to consider the field, you have to understand those fields in the middle around the concession stand are the ones that can use the most. And those are the heart of Ironell baseball. We're trying to bring the baseball back because for some reason it got laxed. And I would hope that the council would give more support um, to the field, pretty much to all our parks. You know, I have two little girls of four and five. We have to go to Homewood to play at the playground because the playground is so bad um, by Holiday Gardens. But I would not want my child to play on them because they rusted and where they're located at. Um, it's, the, it's, the, it's the playground right when you go into, uh, from Holiday Gardens, you go through the little walkway, those little, you know, that's, <laughs> that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. That's brand new. So, yeah, so, um, and I don't think we have to go outside our community to get activities here, you know. Um, so, that's just my take. There's some, you know, consideration that, you know, we are going to bring it back. Um, I love this community. I love everything about this community. Um, but I would like for the community to least kind of help us out. You know, I don't mind digging into my pockets, <laughs> if so, to help. But at the same time, we do want to have a consideration that we do have a council back on the things that try to um, bring this community back, especially our baseball program. Thank right. you so Thank much. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. So Thank you. 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 Thank Please. I'm Cindy Cuellar, and one of the things that I think is essential right now, we're talking about temporary, and during that time, I think the best approach to all of this is to get a count. How many kids are involved in the baseball program? That is essential, because you've got six fields. The other thing I wanted to mention is you had a group of people who love dogs, who need a dog park. They took the, they took the bull by the horns. They went out, did fundraising went and talked with Home Depot, went and did all these things to make it easy for the city council to say this is a, this is a good temporary solution. The community took the initiative, and that's what needs to happen with everything in Irondale. Stop coming to the city council and expect the city council to do it all. The community needs to take the initiative. If you have baseball, take the initiative. If you have soccer, take the initiative. If you have a dog park, these people went out and did the work. And my understanding is they've already done part of the work already. So to say, no, you can't have that field. The work has been done. It's a temporary solution. In the meantime, find out how many people are involved in baseball and find a way to work with it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Ben Bramer, um, first thing, we did not decide we wanted Ruffner Park, Barney Field. The mayor had a vision and said, we're not going to pay this exorbitant rent to the landlord for Grants Mill Station. And we're going to close the dog park. And Charlie, you said temporary move to Ruffner Field. OK, that's the way the ball played out. How long is temporary? And it was going to be temporary. Now, I have empathy for people who say, how long is temporary? Uh, but I have an answer for you. It depends on number one, coming up with a formulated plan, and number two, coming up with the money. 
neither of which have been presented out. What we're hearing, temporary field four. Why? Because we were told by a guy named Tony Pearson, I believe, that that field wasn't used. So, okay, I'm sorry. That was the information we got. You got six ball fields. I'm sorry, I don't think you use all six of them all the time. I could be wrong, but you're going to have to show me first. Secondly, now we're being pushed into Beacon. With all due respect to Councilor Bearden, that would be the worst choice. First thing, you would end up putting a dog park behind the pavilion where, and I go to the dog park twice a day, I see people up there, family reunions, what Councilman Wilson said, church groups, they're cooking brats, they're cooking dogs, they're cooking hamburgers, and you want to have a 110 pound wine rider running through there? I don't think so. That's stupid. You end up losing both. Okay, well, folks, please. And they, these people use the pavilion, and I say, hey, great for them. But cooking food on fire and dogs just doesn't mix. So you end up with something like that. But let me let me try to bring to some conclusion here. We know there are two factions here tonight represented. We know we've got work to do. I think we have to turn it to parks and recreation. I think some of the councilmen had some comments they would like to make. We've got a group, you know, right now for a show of hands. Who is wanting to speak in favor of the dog park? So we've got that group. And who was speaking in opposed to the dog park being at Rutherford? For baseball. For, for baseball. For baseball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, we've got our two factions in the room tonight. This is not going to be resolved. We need to have a, a quick move forward, and we've got a committee that can do that and handle it. Uh, I think there were some comments that wanted to be made. We want to start with Council of London, if you don't mind. It's not. I'm not trying to silence anyone in the audience. But we're saying the same thing over and over again, and we're not going to get a resolution doing that. We've got to get in a structured manner. And again tonight, this is not a council meeting. This is a work session. It is strictly for us to decide agenda item that we may have questions on for tomorrow night to vote. And there will not be a vote tomorrow night, potentially, to do anything related to the dog park. But we are going forward with what we have already voted on because it is already underway and will be temporary. The Parks Committee maybe can come up with some idea of what temporary means. I cannot answer that right now. I don't think anyone can, but we can look into that. Chairman, maybe. can you guarantee that we will have more time to talk tomorrow? You will have your three minutes before the mic like anyone else in the audience if you want to make comments. Can I ask? And it might, it might work well, which worked well for some of the dog park issues. One or two people got everybody together and they represented the group rather than have eight or ten people say the same thing over and over again. Because that's not a use of either side's time. We have a petition and 68 people have signed it. That's what we're here trying to do. Well, this again, this is not a, a meeting for business, you know, business decisions. This is strictly to get ready. Can we, can, let's start that on. Let me just say this. Let me say this. I, 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 am, I am so excited. I am so excited, so fired up to see the number of people that love I do. You know, when you think it's a negative, you mean it, it's a positive. For the folks to come out and fight for what they want Iron Girl to look like. So I'm just I'm just letting you know. I'm excited about this because this is what I've been waiting on for five years. I've been fighting this fight. Actually, 30 years of sitting around there. I've been fighting these kids with these kids. I've been with these kids, baseball, football, basketball, soccer. I've been fighting. And this is the first time, first time, that the citizen has come out and forced their opinion about dogs and children. And it's not, and I told you all along, it has never been about me, but it's always been about the city around there. So I'm excited that we got some folks that want to get around the table and decide how they want Irondale to look like. And I think the mayor's excited about that. And I think this council is excited about that. I think they're proud about that. Because now, 
hopefully we can get some stuff taken care of. And that's what this is all about. It's not about it's not about you against them and them, you know, and you, you should, you know, when, when you talk to people, you have to talk to them in a nice way. To understand the work that they've done, but you have to also understand their perspective also. Understand both sides of the of the thing. You can't just say because I like what they've done, we're gonna push these people aside. No. We have to talk about both sides, what's happening. So I am excited about this. I'm excited about this park community. I know we've talked about a plan. But the plan that they've put together for all the parks, and this is including dogs. It sure does. It, it, the, the plan that we, they've talked about includes everybody. I talked to Miss Michael today on the way over here. She tells me, I love my dog, but if you want some help with baseball or soccer, please call her. And I, I'm telling you what, I'm excited about that. That finally we brought some folks together that's going to get some things done for the city of Ryder. And that's what we've been looking for. And now it won't be about John, it won't be about the park committee, but it'll be about you. And that's what it should be all about. So I'm excited about it. I, I love your passion. I love your passion. Because this tells me that you love the city of Ryder. And so don't, don't let that fire run out. Because what's going to happen now, it's going to be a long process. It's going to be a tough process. Right? And we have to be all together because we all love City Right here. So if you're ready to work, I think the mayor, myself, the council are ready to help you push this thing forward. But we're going to do all that we can to make sure everybody get what they need for City Right here. Councilor Spivey, you have another comment, please? Sure, um, and I don't want to piggyback on what John's saying, uh, which is why I um, I contributed on, on Facebook to the conversation and everything, because I do care um, about that, and I want to thank you for that for that, for that passion. Um, I think it's a good thing. I don't, I, it feels a little negative in here right now with, you know, this versus that, but I would agree. There's a lot of good energy here, and I definitely don't want to lose that momentum. Um, how long is temporary? I don't know. I absolutely have no idea. All right. So the the thing is, is like we've said a couple times, we've got to take. And I want to do this sooner than later. I'm not trying to say, oh, uh, I'm going to push this back for two years or something like that. I want to do this sooner than later. Capitalize on the momentum that we've got right now and take a holistic look at Ruffner Park and how it can be utilized best, incorporating. You know, maybe all sports. I don't know. We've got to take a look at the property and uh, and, and, and get that. We've been talking about this. I guess the big problem that I'm, I'm having personally, I'm just going to be transparent, is the fact that we've been talking about this since since the end of October. Now, yes, I know the decision was just passed recently, but we've been having these conversations since at least. And uh, to reference a news clip, uh, I know not everybody does Facebook. Uh, maybe not everybody, not everybody watches Fox 6, but I think it was at Fox that they did that interview on. So there was um, multiple ways that this was actually brought out into the light that we've been talking about this since late October. Um, citizens came forward with the dog park, you know, and, and, and we acted accordingly based on the information we got and what was brought to us and everything. And then Frank from Public Works, they've already been out there for days doing work, moving soil around. Um, I can't disrespect that work that you guys have done and say sorry, you know, good job, redirect your energy. You guys have laid topsoil, you guys have put in gates. I mean, it's, it's pretty much ready to go um, for the most part. I would, would you agree with that? I mean, there's still some more work to do, Frank? Okay, but I mean, you guys have done a lot already, right? Yeah, we have the topsoil okay. alongside and we put the gates in. Sure, and from a, from a legislative, if you want to look at this legislatively, you know, going back on a decision that we made two weeks ago after we've already spent money and done, done labor, that sets a really bad precedence that we aren't strong enough to um, carry forward our decisions that we make up here. Um, so there's, I look at that as well. Um, sorry to ramble, but, um, you know, we do need to put a plan in place for rough. So temporary, what does that mean? I don't have a good answer for you now, but we want to take a holistic look at Ruffner. I think Beacon is a good second park, but I, I agree with some of the other concerns. Like I said, second park. I'm not saying one and only, but I'm saying second option. Um, you know, I think that there's ways to continue to enhance Beacon that would make it an even more comprehensive park. Um, so 
Uh, that's that's kind of my, my thing there. I like Field 4 because of its proximity to its parking lot right there. You don't have to drag your dog all the way through uh, the front parking lots to get to that field. It's got a parking lot right there. Um, so I know that was some concerns about dogs and kids mixing and things like that. I think for as far as hedging your bets goes, it's a pretty good lo location for that. So I think I hit all the things. I'm Thank probably you. forgetting something. but Councilor Bearden, did you have any redirect? Yeah. Um, I've heard in the last week, I've heard from both uh, people from, uh, about the dog park and, and the baseball field. And I know that uh, field four is used. You've got uh, a field that is used for t-ball. And once uh, the kids get old enough, they don't play t-ball anymore. Five, six, seven year olds, they use field four. And then they progress from field four uh, the girls go on to softball and the boys go on to uh, the smaller baseball field. But field four is used for the, uh, for the younger children just uh, play baseball for the five, six, seven year olds. So it is used every year. Uh, and as far as the dog park, I, I'm trying to help find an alternative uh, so that the uh, baseball, the ball field can be used by the kids to play ball. And, uh, the, and I've heard from several uh, people in the, in the community, and the best uh, suggestion that I've heard was uh, Beacon Park. That's why I put it on here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I knew there'd be objections from both ends, but uh, I was trying to find an alternative so that everybody will have a, uh, what they need, a ballpark and a, and a dog park. Thank you. Councilor Wilson, I think you had a comment. I'm Before we started the party, I did over what Council's body said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not every day, but I'm the majority. Any questions for the business that will be on the agenda for tomorrow night from the Council? May I, may I have my turn on this? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, please. Okay, because I, I want to I thank the Council for, um, for your comments just now because I think we're probably as, in as close of agreement as we have been mm -hmm. on these types of topics and I'll address this to you all as well. I, I like the passion too, I like what you said. You know, uh, six months ago nobody was thinking about baseball and what was happening at Ruffner or really dog parks for that matter. None of you That's were really doing that. Yeah. So. Um, if you look at the fields now as they are, how many how many of you attended the game last year at Rockner? One, two, right. three. Two, two, three families. Okay, that's my point. That's my point. Is that it hasn't been, it can be. My son's played baseball there. I don't have a dog. Okay? But I think I think that both of these can coexist. And I think we can look at the, the great piece of property we have as an asset and figure out a plan for it where we can make it bigger and better than what any of us are sitting here right now thinking because we're thinking in silos right now. We're thinking about dog parks and we're thinking about baseball and we're thinking about, you know, just just whatever our focus is right now. There's there, there's a line in the, the, the play, The Lion King, where, where who is it, the small one, Simba says to, 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 the, to the parent, you or the parent says to, to the little lion, you are more than what you have become. We are more than what we have become with these issues. And we could be better than what we are, and we should be better than what we are, and we shouldn't be fighting each other. I tell you, the time that we spent on the negative energy, I think, I think Councilor London said, let's take it and turn it positive and work together. And you might be just surprised at what we can become in all of this. There are six fields up there right now. There were According to Councilor Bearden, there were three teams that played. I heard four, but three teams that played there last year. That's a field for every team with two, two fields left over. So we, we just need to look at it comprehensively and see what we can make it and make it more than what we think that it can be even today. That's what we need to do. And, and, and I think I heard that from every one of these counselors going down the line here. Even with the ditto, because that's where I was. I, I was saying, yeah, 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 as these guys spoke on that. But we need you all to come alongside and not just stay in your silo.
but say, how can we coexist? Because it's not dog. I laugh every time I hear this, and I see this stupid stuff on Facebook about the dog people and the baseball people. It's not dog people and baseball people. We're all residents of Irondale, and we all are in the same boat, and when we raise the level of the water, the tide for one, we all rise. And that's what we need to do, and we need leadership from the council, and we need to come up with a plan, and we need support from the residents to make it happen. And I think we can do it. I think we can because of that passion, because of that, that desire that we have in our silos. Let's just break down the walls, come together, and make it more than what we have become at this point. I hope that you will join these guys as they lead the way in doing that. Thank you for your comments, Mayor. Just for everybody to know, the three people sitting, starting on that end to the uh, blue, are your Parks and Recreation Committee members, and they are the ones that will take the point on this, I would assume. Okay. Mayor, did you join? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, you went in on with the uh, education. Sorry. The three, starting on Councilor London, Councilor Spivey, and Councilor Wilson. So they will be the ones taking point and going forward. And uh, you're welcome to direct comments directly to them as, as a committee or directly you know, to the mayor's office. All of our emails are very simple to remember. First initial, last name at cityofirondaleal.gov. And that will get to anybody on this podium if you wanted to send comments. Right. Any time you want to get together, all three of us can't be there together. But one, two of us can be there to have some discussion. Right. Well, what I'm saying, without having to call, okay. without having to call yeah. two of us, can, two of us can be there together without having without calling a park committee. So anytime you want to meet mm -hmm. two of us or two of them, we all get together and have a conversation. Correct. I have, I have a look here from our council. Hey, how many people? Who all is on this? Three. One, two, three. Okay, well, then two would be a quorum. One. I think you were talking about this council member. Yes, council members, right, but, but a committee is actually a body as well, and so you, can, you can't have a That's correct. Right. Okay. And just one, one final thing here. Yes, sir. It's just, just so you guys know, I mean, you guys might know this. If you don't know this, um, but if you do, I apologize. These called meetings are the only times we can have these conversations. So sometimes I think there's an expectation that we're out there talking to each other about these items. That does not happen. We might, from a high level, give our opinion from one to the other, but we do not have, we don't have the privilege of talking about this stuff unless we have a meeting. So I just want to throw that out there to say, hey, we're not just in, you know, trying to say, hey, come to our meeting and nothing's going to get done. It's just this is the only topic to talk about. So we're, not, we're not talking behind closed doors. Right. And, and hopefully... By having these work sessions when we get to the council meeting, which is actually a business meeting. And as Councilor Wilson pointed out, uh, the state of Alabama or no legislation requires allowing people to talk at that meeting. It's strictly to do the city's business. But Irondale has had a history of allowing the people that come to the meetings to make their comments known. But again, I hope we don't make decisions based on just those people that come to the meetings because that's only a handful out of a city full of people uh, with we've got a uh, census of over 12,000 people. So I don't make decisions till I hear what comes from my council members as we get together for these discussions and some of the comments from the audience and what people in my district send me in the interim. And I have had absolutely, I've had maybe two comments on one issue and none on the other in my district. So the people that are out there that are in support of this they need to be active, and this is a point group that you can work with to get that movement started. Uh, I think we had one more comment, and then we'll go. Excuse me. Excuse me, if you don't mind. I think you had, you, you've been wanting to say something for the audience. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of things I want to say, honestly. Oh, okay. but, but one of them, um, just directly to that, there's a, y'all have a petition with 68 signatures on right. it. Yeah. And there's an, an additional 400 if you add together this is 468 if you had together soccer and baseball all together. So a lot of people talking about it. Um, I don't know how many emails you've got, and I've had people say that they're sending you letters, but I don't know if they are or not. But there are a lot of people concerned, and the reason they're concerned is they feel like there's not a long-term vision that is going in front and pulling freight. It feels like there's temporary decisions being made 
without a long-term clear plan. So I, I just don't understand why we would have a temporary solution to this ballpark and, and say it's going to be temporary until we can come up with an agreed upon long-term plan um, and figure out how we're going to budget it to actually do the long-term plan. So, I'll, I'll just make one quick comment. Uh, those of you that came to the meetings and looked at our budget, we're going into a budget year with a $700,000 deficit, not a surplus. There are three of us that are new to this council uh, or to the mayor's office, and we have been in office approximately a year now, and things have come along, but we've also had some challenges to overcome to get to this point. So this is a way of moving forward slowly but surely, and I think the mayor has the point. Things will be better but you're going to have to crawl a little bit before we get to that point. That's what makes it a permanent solution, though. All right. That yeah. practicality of it makes it permanent. Mr. Bishop, I think this lady first, and then no. I'll find it. I have a quick, Gail Tucker, I live in Holiday Gardens. I have a quick comment. I did try to email today, and it was referred back to me as undeliverable, that our website is under reconstruction or something. Is that just <coughs> on my end? No. <coughs> so I can't email you. I'll check Okay. Yeah, you'll yeah, talk to our expert and she'll okay. definitely. Okay. There's something I get every time I send something out uh, that says uh, it's something with a server on AOL in the UK. Oh. That doesn't mean your email doesn't go through. It just doesn't work through that server. Yes, Mr. Bishop. Just a couple of questions. How much does the city spend on maintaining Ruffner Park right now? They spend any funds other than just general maintenance cutting the grass? Okay, does the baseball associations charge a fee for the players to play, and does any of that fee come to the city for maintenance? Or does the baseball association maintain the property, draw the lines, but grade the, the dirt, whatever else? They, they grade the dirt, they draw the line, they a lot of time cut the grass, they do all that. You'd be surprised what they do. Okay, but does and any of the, the fees the fee that, that they, they charge, charge, and the fee that they charge, the only, thing, the only thing really the city does, been done for years, is give them lights. They turn them, let them turn the lights on mostly. And I think that's, um, we got charged for the lights and whatnot. No, I don't think we charge for the lights. Lights, water, and wood cut. Lights, water, and they cut, they cut some fields. But as far as doing the lines and, and doing the fields and things like that, mostly that's, that's handled with the, with the baseball. But, but as the, if you go out there and look, you'll see that things are run down. I mean, yeah. the benches that are, are we, we, down there, the, run, the, the run. dugouts are start going down here. Run. Could not this, the baseball associations contribute to maintaining the park? They don't I mean, they kind of mind. No. I know because like you have to be out there. when you my daughter out there. plays soccer at Shades Valley, it cost me almost a thousand dollars for her to do that. You have to be in that field to understand all of it. Right. Look, at, look, at, look from the outside in doesn't explain that. They don't charge anywhere near. They don't. They don't, they don't charge. charge. They don't charge enough to do that. But they want the kids to play if they're born. Yeah. Mr. Gray. What happened to the guy that was leasing the park? Did we ever get our money? He does. He does all he can do as far as doing his part. But yeah. I'm talking about, didn't he guarantee us $200,000 or some kind of he, thing? He's put some money in there. I'm not no, quite sure. That how much money has he put in? I, I don't have that figure right away. I mean, should but that But it's still not. It's still not. Isn't that it's something you should know is how much he's paid and how much he owes us? He's actually, he's brought the, brought the field up to look better than what they used to be. But what about yeah. the money? I mean, what do we know that he spent two hundred thousand dollars, or are we just saying he looks better? No, I don't think he spent two hundred thousand dollars. But wasn't that what he agreed to do? Yeah. But why is he still involved? Because he's still we didn't give him that deadline to spend two hundred thousand dollars. I thought it was for a year. No. I think that the contract was for a year, and he was going to put two hundred thousand dollars. The contract is he's still on the contract right now. He's what? He's still on the contract right now. Well, what are we going to do about getting our money? I, I, and what I'm saying is, why are we in this shape if he pledged two hundred thousand dollars to fix it? Let me let me tell you, it's not his problem, bro. I mean, we can't we can't put it on him. It's not that's not his. It's not his fault. That's not trying to put it on him. That's but not, if he did his part, not, we wouldn't have to be paying this money. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. What's wrong? Have, have, right? you, have you been out there lately? Yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars not going to going to put those. But he away. hasn't done his part. He's done what what he can do. He's done it. He's he's doing it. He's doing it. But that's not what he contracted to do. He's, he's right. He's doing it. So that's not put it on him. It's not. It's not his fault. But it's our fault for not seeing that he does. Yeah. But the bills have been in bad shape longer than he's been out there. But he agreed to do it for that. Yeah. But 
Yeah, that's not priority. And we've let him get revenue from having clinics and this and that, but he hasn't done his part. That's not priority. That's not priority. That's not priority. That's not priority. Hey, I'll take one more comment and then we'll adjourn. I just want to address We're losing um, members. <laughs> why Ruffner, why, as opposed to Beacon or Ellard, as the mayor had told me and council members, they were, you're in a deficit. What could we do as citizens? Our park closes at the end of this month. We raised enough money where it cost the city nothing for Ruffner. We will buy all the supplies. As far as Will baseball have to reimburse us? Of course not. Absolutely not. If I can continue to raise funds and put it into another field, that would be fantastic. I'm all for kids in sports. My daughter was a state champion gymnast um, for Mountain Brook Gymnastics when she was younger. I, I, I mean, I traveled and, you know, cheered, and she's a national competition for dance at John Carroll. I understand the passion. It gave her the drive to be in a uh, biology major and pursuing a career in medicine. I understand the importance of, uh, of kids and involved in sports. I got, I got that. And, and as Ms. Michael told you, we're more than willing to continue because Ruffner is a mess and we as the citizens need to chip in and, and fix our green space. It's one of the few things that Irondale has to offer that other communities can't. Mount Brook may have beautiful things. They don't have any green space because they're all about the buildings and bringing in the revenue. So that's why we had decided on Ruffner because it gave us enough space for a temporary spot and we will pay for the supplies. That, that's pretty much how it went. We can't afford Beacon. Can I say something but really quick? My comment's not on the dog park. It's a suggestion to the council to consider. I understand the whole thing with the merit-based performance long-term mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. If I can just make a suggestion, the way you've got it now, you've got to come up with a fix because it was under budgeted. <coughs> All right, I understand that. But in the future, when you're working on this, the thing that's confusing for me is when I hear the word bonus. For me, bonus <coughs> means everybody. There's an incentive for everybody to do hard work, to, to get a bonus. But this is for long-term employees. So I'm asking that you consider using a different terminology instead of bonus when you, when you work in your budget information. It's not, it's not, it's not bonus, it's longevity pay. You get so many dollars for right. so many years. I kept hearing bonus, bonus throughout the well, discussion. I, I, I use like Christmas bonus. Not this is a bonus. But I said they look at it as it is, it is a Christmas. And it's based on and performance, right? Performance. Yes. Okay. We can have a lot of things for the long term. Yes, ma'am. Not one more. Did you have She's been trying to get her in. Okay. <laughs> because I'm, uh, I usually work at this time of night, and I'm in private practice. So it's hard for me to get here. But I was committed to get here because, truly, I didn't even know until someone reached out to me because they knew I was a baseball parent that there was a discussion of moving to dog park. So I come to the work session before about it, but I was the only one here. So I don't know if the information was disseminated as it should, but that being said, we actually had no problem with working with the dog people. <laughs> because we just think like field four is not appropriate. Field two is very appropriate for a dog park because we actually do use field four and the person who commented had been involved in the park, to my knowledge, for the last three years. So, but we do use field four. So we were all cool with using field two because it actually gives you your own space and parking lot. It's just a different gravel parking lot. So we are open to that. And we are open to working with them because if you use field, any field, it doesn't matter. As a dog park, who's gonna pay to turn it back into a baseball field? Clay dirt is not. Baseball infield dirt is not cheap. It's like $30 to $50 a yard. And it has to be a certain regulation thickness. And it has to be a certain amount. So you're looking at $20,000 to turn it back into a ballpark, but $1,200 to turn it into a dog, I mean back into a baseball field, but $1,200, $1,500 to turn it into a dog park. So for me, it's financial. We barely are making it like we've talked before, 
getting the kids out and paying. And we're not going to turn kids away. So if a kid can't pay, we make it happen. And we're doing all of that. So coming up now with $20,000 in the future to turn a field we use back into a field, it makes it like we're drowning already. Now we're drowning in a monsoon. So that, that was my own only concern because we actually do play baseball out there and JCA also leases one of the fields of their own field. One so, of the, uh, just from a finance committee standpoint, some feedback on you there. Obviously, if we took a holistic look at Ruffner and, and shuffled the fields around, that would be a factor, uh, a cost factor that we would have to uh, understand no. as part right. of the project. And I agree, yeah. Ruffner needs to be redone. And we've kind of, I don't know, I guess my kids are, I'm the oldest ballpark parent in the room mm -hmm. currently. Um, the fields, each field has its own unique issues. I understand. Yeah. And so, yeah, we have always agreed. We just figured out how to work around those issues. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, one of my one of my pushbacks is once again we we just we've been talking about this since October twenty six yeah, something like that. I didn't know anything like that. about yeah. it. No, and, well, okay, and I yeah. don't get on into the back and forth on Facebook, so I usually just sure. don't hear. I don't get it unless someone comes to me. But someone personally came to me and said, "Don't your kids play baseball?" And I was the, like, "Yeah." The they, conversation didn't start. This conversation didn't start until after we took action. Well, okay. we had been talking about it for a good month and a half prior, so that's why we're. See, I wish I had known because then we could have actually worked with them because we have the hikers who come through when we play baseball, and there's someone who rides a horse through and watches the game. So you know, right. I want well, us. Again, this, and I think our your point is due. made, and yeah. I think that's the idea. Um, I think from the council standpoint, we've already gone over my threshold. Um, is there any move to adjourn? Second. Second. Okay. Thank you, people.